Uh, you need Ladies and gentlemen, we have A.D. Bryant, Adam joining us, the block geek. <laughs> Sorry about that, Adam. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Well, get, uh, I just finished that. I just finished. You did? Yeah, I just finished it yesterday. And what did you, uh, did you buy it because, uh, I mean, when did, wh what order did you read? I mean, did you just, uh, are you reading it in canon order or did you just like, oh, I'm going to pick this one up and read this one? Uh, I wanted, I kept getting recommended by like other YouTube channels and uh, I just bought the uh, Audible version oh, yeah. of it and oh, it was really good. One. I just finished the first book, so. Oh, okay. So no spoilers for the other two books on this, uh, on this channel. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I love, honestly, I love the cover. I think yeah. it's it's just that the guy on the cover just looking <clears throat> You can tell Path of Destruction, this guy is going to make some bad choices. And he's going to do some uh, dark things. Mm -hmm. And it, it's pretty simple, too. And the artist, I have that uh, page saved here in the Essentials Guide, the Essential Reader's Companion, um, which tells you things like when it was published and the uh, artist's name, if I can find it. Sorry. Um, we have the artist, John Jude Powell. Palancar. John Jude Palancar. He did all of the covers. Hmm. That's weird because the rule that, cover does not look like that style. Yeah, it uh, the rule two you, color cover color cover does not look good in, in my opinion. Yeah, no. I would second that. The only thing they got right is Dark Bane's lightsaber is hooked. Mm -hmm. The only plus. It's the only like art I can think of. Where Darth Bane's lightsaber looks correct because in Jedi versus Sith it looks wrong. It's also purple for some reason in Jedi versus Sith. Mm -hmm. And the book's written by Drew Carpation, which I, I guess that's how you say his name. I'm horrible with saying names. I, I've yeah. always pronounced it Carpation. Carpation. Okay. I know people reach out to him on Twitter all the time, asking, "Hey, has Del Rey reached out to you? Has Lucasfilm reached out to you?" And his response is always the same. Nope, but I'd love to do something. I think he's still on the um, on the team for uh, Bioware with the with the tour stuff. I think he's somewhat involved with um, with that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I, I wish if the, if the new canon were to do one thing right, it would be to hire Drew Carpation or Carpation Drew K. Drew K. I always thought it was funny that. The entire Jedi Order gets destroyed because Bane bit someone's thumb in a mine once. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest was history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Christopher says that uh, Drew is no longer with Bioware and he is with Blizzard. So he's working with another Star Wars writer, Christy Golden. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously, Chris, we only block people who think Yoda Dark Rendezvous is good. So, I was yeah, uh, guys, quality autism is right. I, I read this wrong. The uh, the the artist for uh, Dynasty of Evil and uh, Rule of Two, John Van Fleet, mm. definitely <laughs> would buy Path of Destruction based on that cover. <laughs> Same. Yeah. 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 Me too. Mm. Oh, I, I would I would buy based on that cover. No, Jeremy. Jeremy? Okay, I, I picked some some real trash here. Ooh, here we go. We got a new dawn. Oh, pick I was curious about that now. one. It made, uh, the only reason I picked it is I forgot to actually film a review for this last year and didn't realize it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hate this cover. I think yeah. It's, it's terrible. It's it, The sad thing is it's not the worst Nick it, cover. <clears throat> But it's just pretty bad. Like I don't know the I don't know the artistic terms for this, but I guess like in like um in like film you'd call it like the blocking or like how you set up. The setup is all good. You know, you got the two characters back to back, you got stormtroopers, you've got like ships up. It's just the art style itself. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is it, these are uh, rebels characters and it I mean, looks like a young adult novel. And I thought that was a now of course when I knew this was coming out that was gonna be the first new canon novel. But I was like, wow, that's not the way to go. You you should have gone with Dave Dorman. 
you mm-hmm. should have gone big on your first new canon yeah. novel. And they went with something that, honestly, that looks like a young adult book. Mm-hmm. I mean, to be fair, the story is very mediocre, just like the art. So you're getting what you pay for. The cover artist is Doug Wheatley. Now, I believe, I could be wrong. Jeremy, you would know. Uh, maybe Adam. Uh, is this the only cover in the new canon that has, like, cartoony, like a cartoon cover? Uh, uh, I believe so. That's bad, yeah. Um, Master and Apprentice is like a nice painted cover. Yeah, it's like a painting, yeah. Yeah, it looks more like a canvas than a book cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, a lot I, of them are like just blandly Photoshop covers, but not like the ones we've been like critiquing that were EU. They're a different style. Right. Of cover like to be modern or their movie characters. I remember when I first this is the first book that came out in canon. Jeffrey Watson said it was a boring story, bland story, excuse me. It is. It like nothing happens. The thing is, like it has like a cool looking villain, like he's the coolest looking villain, but like he is like one dimensional bad guy of the week. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, like villain of the week. Here he is. Um, would uh, you would buy? You, would you buy that cover? No. Yeah, no, 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 no for multiple reasons. <laughs> no. One, but Dylan, I did. Dylan, go. But I did. All right, <laughs> y'all are bringing some trash ones. Um, I have a little known, um, not even little known. I actually just looked him up, and he actually has uh, two covers for books that were canceled: Escape from Dagu and Blood Elf. So, um, maybe it's cursed, but. Uh, New Jedi Order, Enemy Lines 1, Rebel Dream. Oh, I forgot that was a cover. That's yeah. Good. This is my... um, I I didn't know we were supposed to pick bad covers to like tear them into, because these are my two favorite covers for uh, oh. book and oh, no. comic. These are just the ones I could grab. It just happened to be bad. <laughs> Getting faster, Matt. I, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad you picked good covers. Yeah, because it's not always. It was about bad covers the first time, and it can be about anything now. Because we covered some of the worst of the worst. Let's be honest. Yeah, we got through <laughs> some of the trash. Although I have some more trash I found. I'm fine okay. with trash. I'm fine with trash. And like hey, Adam, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna ask Dylan if is that book any good? Uh, very. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, agree. I would say. Uh, in New Jedi Order, I would say this is probably the best of the non-hard covers. Oh, really? Which, which no, wait. Mm. It's it, a tie between this and Traitor. What book oh, is it in that biography. series? It is um, two books after Star by Star. So, Man, Dylan, I don't know if 11. you're right or not. You could be right on that. I like Dark Journey, though, too. Yeah. No, I mean, you could be a, no, you could be right though. Well, star by star well, paperbacks. Star by star, dark journey. No, you said paperback. You said paperbacks. Yeah, star paperbacks. by star was not a hardback. Not covering the five hardcovers. Yeah. So okay. you may be right on that. Fair, everyone, everything in New Jedi Order did get collected in hardcover. Right. Well, I know that, but I'm just. And uh, Traitor and Dark Journey were single hardcovers as opposed to being put in a duology. Because so count that this is the book Matt talks about this all the time. This is the book that had the C three PO scene when he's seeing the sparks. It's oh. a great, it's a great scene, and and they were who did I talk to about that? No, I talked to Stackpole about that. That's right. And I asked him what was that about, and he said it was an idea that they had that they just didn't develop. They didn't have time to develop. And I was like, that's a great <laughs> idea. I love that scene. Honestly, if you were to tell me some of the best scenes in New Jail Order, that might make... Hold on, let me see before I say that. It would definitely make my top ten. Yeah. I almost said top five. It's a great scene, though. There's he's, two pondering his ex- he's pondering his existence, and he's become sentient in a way. I mean, like, I, I don't know. It was just... I was like, ooh, I mean, what is it? What's going on here? And they just kind of let, let it go, but... Michael Stackball said it was an idea that they just didn't develop it. And I was like, it was an awesome idea. Sounds intriguing. <clears throat> the cover artist on that one was David Seeley. 
Yeah, he did a uh, MedStar Cross Current Rip, uh, the MedStar Duology Cross Current Riptide. This one, uh, the two canceled ones I mentioned earlier, and uh, Outbound Flight and Shadows of Mendor. Shadows of Mendor is a cool cover. Jeremy, oh, do we um, all agree we would buy on that cover? Yeah. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. <laughs> oh no, you guys just mentioned Shadows of Mendor, and I actually bought that copy recently. Oh. Now, not to do any spoilers, Jeremy, didn't you read that one about a year ago and say that it sucked? Which one? Shadows of Mendor? Yeah. Oh, I hate Matthew's cover. So that's. Uh, to me, I couldn't finish it. Okay. <laughs> okay. When I reviewed it, I got lambasted about not talking about how it was not well written. I thought it was fine, but I was more. When I was reading it, I was very intrigued because, like, wow, they are really diving deep into Marvel. Yeah, that I appreciate. And, what I don't appreciate and, is when and, you spend multiple pages describing uh, how a TIE Defender uh, works. Like, I if I want to do that, I'll read a goddamn schematic. I don't uh, want that in my EU book. Like, that's boring to me. I, you're about to get blocked, by the way. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to – I was just saying that – when to me and you're right you're right everyone was right on that you know maybe i should have commented more on how it was written but the thing was i remember and maybe i should reread it again because when i was reading i was like oh wow wow black hole the, the you know the stormtroopers and the and and black hole and i was like this is great you know and i was like wow i was just in th I, to me continuity really put rose colored glasses on it i'll be honest so maybe i should read it again with a different set of eyes but I was just so impressed that he was just digging, I mean, digging deep into Marvel. Well, I and mean, that's something, that's like the positive of any of Matthew Stover's books is this continuity. Is a, he's like James Lucino and just weaving continuity in really well. But to me, it, it, when it falls, the thing that really makes the book fall apart to me is we know how it <clears throat> And they try to do the oh, Luke's gonna go to jail because he committed war crimes. No, I, I, and I get it, I get it. It's just that I was just, just really anything that starts making continuity, it just got me excited because I like to see continuity. And to be honest, to be honest, I mean that's, it's one of the things that I probably enjoyed more books that weren't as good just because, but only because they made connections is why I really enjoyed them. Like. <clears throat> There are scenes in, I think it's the Fate of the Jedi series, mm -hmm. that come straight out of, uh, I mean, Westing games. I mean, heavy. They dug heavy into Westing games. And I was like, oh, man, this is so good. But then I was thinking about it. I was like, would other people enjoy this? And I don't want to give anything away, but I don't think I am here. I don't think I am. I'm not giving away spoilers here. <clears throat> But when Ben Skywalker sees spiders, is that non-Star Wars? You know, you're saying, wait, spiders? Yeah, he sees a bunch of, you know, what's going on there? And is it too confusing and too weird for people? That's what I was wondering. What, if no one had read, because when, when he sees spiders, I know exactly where they are. And I, I know exactly what's going on. But that's because I've read through that West End Games uh, adventure yeah. a billion times. And I was so excited they were they were and everything from that West End Games adventure they were experiencing. And I was yeah, like, is this uh, too weird for people? Probably with certain things. To me, with uh Fate of the Jedi, uh Christy Golden's books to me are the weakest. Obviously, yeah. Written wise, like I that I feel bad but, saying that it's the short end of the stick in a lot of my reviews. But like I just don't <clears> like the <throat> style at all. It was like they prepared to have Karen Travis for this series, and then Karen Travis had her blow up and like was done with Star Wars, and they just brought her in last minute to like, hey, can you bridge these things together, and like write it, write like three books? Well, we could we could go on this, but let's go back to the covers. Now I've only read like a few chapters of this so far, but um, it was I don't I don't know what to make of this, but Crucible. Ooh. Oh, that, that's, that's a change. That's a very interesting one to be reading. Yeah, the uh, the back was a little eh, I just I don't know. I'm gonna be on oh go ahead. I like it. I, I, I like love it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it because it shows the characters aged and I really did enjoy it. And, um can I pick yeah, it back off of you saying 
aged them well and it makes sense. Like, it, because sometimes, like in New Jedi Order, they age the characters on the covers, and sometimes it just doesn't look that great. Like, it's not bad, it's just not right. that good. My only yeah, I think the is... Japanese covers of New Jedi Order did a much better job with that. Dylan, don't interrupt. <laughs> He's good. This is what happened <clears throat> by the telemarketer. Um, I was just kind of noticing, like, Han Solo's, like, head looks like it's too small for his body. It does, a, yeah, I see that. That's okay, I, that's I'm going to make that. Hey, blow that, that blow that up. Yeah. You may have a point there. I've never noticed that. Wait, put it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Proportion-wise, it may be a little off. I don't like the way they, the art on any of them. I mean, Luke looks kind of cool right there. Yeah, well, I mean, the way Luke holds his lightsaber is a little awkward, but I, I just like how they were aged a little bit, and I thought they were yeah. aged appropriately. Yeah. But you're right. I've never noticed that about his head. Yeah, but to Adam, be honest, would, the front cover? would you say that's a reverse choices of one art thing? Like an art artistic yeah. choice? Huh. See, that right there, I like that. Yeah, that I like that front like, cover. I didn't like the way Leia looks. Leia looks goofy to me. No, pull Leia back up. This is not... Oh, I don't care. This is not fat Carrie Fisher. This is like thin <laughs> Carrie Fisher here. I'm just saying. So this book was published <laughs> after the. Uh, it was published after this, wasn't it? Mm hmm. Yeah, because I didn't see it yeah. in here. In the expanded universe, Leia stayed in shape. <laughs> I'm just saying. She was on a bunch of missions in the new expanded, in the, uh, expanded universe. Right? Oh, Bryce is right. Han looks like Vince McMahon. Ooh. Holy cow, he does. Show that back cover up. Holy cow. The back so what of the we're front. saying is when we make the Crucible fan film, we'll uh, we'll have Vince McMahon. We'll call it No Chance in Hell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good call. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Geek Sack. What were you saying? About, uh, I was just asking if this is, that's the, that's the last book, isn't it? Chronologically. Right. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't the last one to come out from the expanded universe, but yes. That was Honor Among Thieves. That's right. And then there's supposed to be Heir to the Jedi. That was supposed to be part of that, right? And then uh, speaking of well, how you were They were ordered, they were not written. Mm -hmm. And so uh as James Lucino tells it, because he did Tarkin, he said, Okay, so as I'm writing this, he said I don't have to follow the Tarkin backstory from the expanded universe. They said no. So then he rewrote Tarkin's backstory. But he keeps things from Plagueis in there. Hey, well, of course he took stuff from his other books. Yeah, but but, but he did that. To, he he really tried hard to help the fans and get the fans in on buying his book because he said I respect the expanded universe. I'm going to try to stick some of that in there. And he thought mixing the canon would be fun, and that's not what we wanted. And I like James Lucino fine, uh -huh. but. The the st the story changes Tarkin. Whoa, you'd be tripping there. Um, the story uh, changes Tarkin's backstory. So, oh. Can, I just want to put out there that in the new canon, Tarkin would get in a knife fight with someone as an old man, and like is like a psychotic murderer. It is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Where was this one? I don't remember this. This is um like from the Tarkin one off uh comic from. Age of Rebellion. Oh, those. Yeah, I never picked any of those. <clears throat> Arvid, by the way. But, like, Tarkin's, like, shirtless in it, and he has, like, a six-pack abs. They're so stupid. I agree with that. It's like... Like uh, what Jeffrey uh, said, even the name of Air to the Jedi causes nausea. Yeah, that was the one that had a bunch of math equations and uh, noodles. And, yeah, the force moving of noodles uh, that um, Luke does to get the girl who died. Yeah. I tried yeah. listening to that book again on audiobook, uh... And I had to shut it off. Well, yeah, Mark Thompson's Luke impersonation is not good. I'm just it's like one of the few voices he can't do. That was actually the first Star Wars book my wife ever read was Heir to the Jedi. And oh my god. She was telling me about how hard Luke struggled to move that noodle. Yeah, it was a pathetic book. It was a given. I just kind of picture Luke going... Yeah. 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 Hey, calm down. He's like pulsating in his forehead. It's like yeah. so I have a small <clears throat> bag of kidney stones. I mean that that has to be the worst book of canon. Worse than aftermath. Worse aftermath than, is just a major disappointment. As I, to where 
I don't know because Aftermath's horribly written too. It is. Um, but Aftermath is kind of funny. Oh. Um, I just got this one in the mail. It comes out um, soon. I think it might have come out already. I don't know. I just got it. Sorry. February 11th. So next week, there's a kid's book. Oh, okay. Star Wars R2 D2. You know, Matt might like this one. <laughs> They're the biggest up first twins. No, he won't because it's canon. Um, I thought the cover was pretty cool. It's cute. It's for a kid's book. You know, the art's decent. I kind of get that vibe that it's referencing that level in the Super Nintendo Empire Strikes Back where you have to be play as Luke and have to find R2 and Dagobah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, the nightmare level. Oh, I hated that. Dude. It's almost it's, bad. Have you ever played the Empire Strikes Back game on NES? I, um, that, oh, that yeah, they, yeah. That's hell. Playing through Dagobah on, uh, on the NES one. It's um, impossible. It's, they can have it on Super Nintendo. Super is Super Empire Strikes Back is also near impossible, but like, but yeah, um, I mean, this is what I think Matt's gonna love about it. It's got the Ewoks. <laughs> Ewoks. <laughs> too bad Matt's not here. We have, yeah, but then, yeah, it's, to them. it's just a little kid's book. All right, but I, I mean, I thought for a kid, that's pretty. They did a pretty good job on the cover there. Uh, I do have one book. I mean, I don't want to go over anybody's turn. Oh, no, uh, you go right ahead. I'm here. Go right ahead. I have a pile of them that we can get to at some time. I even I a, a box for another one. I was very curious about this one, and I really wanted to buy it. I got it at Barnes & Noble recently. Oh, Course on oh. Night, book four. You do know that's book four in the series, right? I did not, actually. Okay, so that's sure that uh, follow-up to Course on Night's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that book. That is one of the most expensive hardcovers in the EU. It averaged oh, really? about $500 when you use hardcover. I, Golly. I just bought it. I thought that was going Is to that be the hardcover, Adam? No, that's the paper. No, it's the paperback. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, was, cover. I thought that was going to be the last book that I needed to complete my expanded universe collection. I was wrong. I still don't have a copy of Return of the Jedi in paperback. You don't have no. You, it's Revenge of the Sith. I thought Revenge of the Sith. What am I? You have like twenty copies of Return of the Jedi. Gosh, I'm an idiot. Yes, that's a bad show. One. It. <laughs> yeah, I got this one today. Hmm. What? The? That's Scourge. Another hard to find hardcover. Was he the guy from Revan? No, um, Lord Scourge. Okay, I know what you're talking about. who is this on the cover? I genuinely thought it was Wayne Corp, but I think I'm wrong on that. Like, I've been the quality autism said this isn't a Jaden Corp book. I'll you be honest, it's Lord. not a good cover because there's a white background and yeah. a faceless Jedi. Yeah, it was not a good cover. They forgot what to put it in the background. And about. Yeah, that cover tells you nothing, and it tells you not who's in it. Just a generic background. Ba I mean, a white background with a generic Jedi. It's not a good cover. Yeah, I agree. I would not have bought that book. In fact, I remember seeing that on the bookshelf before I was a fan of reading, and uh, I was like, "That looks dumb," and I, <laughs> you know, left the store. I always liked going into bookstores, even though I didn't wasn't a fan of books. There was something about it. It was like destiny it was calling it to me. <laughs> It was the coffee shops. Yeah, yeah. That old Barnes and Noble. Thank you, Starbucks. So I have a uh, 